Hey, Chad. Happy Tuesday to all. Hi, Lauren. Hey, Chad. Oh, I'm backwards. Hey, Sarah, how's it going? Going great, how are you? Good, good. Thanks for having me on this. Yeah, this is so fun. Yeah, absolutely. So you, um, your home's in Queens, New York? Yes, exactly. Nice, how's the weather treating you guys there? Oh, it's a pretty good day today. Yeah, next few days are all right. Spring is starting to uh, show a bit. Yeah, it's such a gift to have the sunshine. Yeah, absolutely. How's, uh, how's everything in, uh, in uh, Tahoe? You're in Tahoe now? Or? Tahoe now. Um, yeah, we also, we had a late winter. Um, <laughs> finally, it's thawed and so everything. It's clean and gorgeous. The sun is shining. We're looking at record high temperatures so it's wow. fantastic yeah beautiful no good stuff great um let's see we're just about a minute past noon um i think maybe i'll start with introducing myself and i've got a few questions for you mm -hmm. um matter of topics um so again, thank you for being here. Um, my name is Sarah Wells. I'm the Patron Experience Manager with Brubeck Jazz Summit at Classical Tahoe. And of course, with us here is musician, uh, faculty at San Francisco Conservatory of Music, faculty member of Brubeck Jazz Summit, and sax phenom, Chad Lefkowitz Brown. Uh, Chad, good to have you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on. So uh, this project, um, this Instagram Live is sort of an extension of the summit notes that have been um, interviews with the esteemed faculty of Brubeck Jazz Summit. And I've started out these interviews generally asking about introduction to uh, the instrument and jazz music in general, but I have sort of a different origin story for you, Chad. Um, I've been noticing a lot how you are talking about musicianship as sort of a whole entity musicianship you're telling uh, dance giggers to have a attitude and to be punctual and to have an offer expressionism and then just today you put up a youtube video on the three traits for a mindset can you talk a little bit about your evolution to approaching musicianship as a sort of whole entity yeah, well, you know, I uh, I don't teach privately anymore, aside from at San Francisco Conservatory, but I did teach for several years on Skype, and so I had a lot of students through that, and uh, I just found it to be a reoccurring thing that, um, you know, there were just kind of like a lot of uh, mindsets that I found to really inhibit their progress, um, and uh, it really takes, I think, a, a specific mentality um to really progress as much as you uh can and, and should as a musician um so yeah and, and i i found a lot of the themes would uh be around just kind of uh, a lack of productivity especially in the modern era and so you know uh, i i just really hope uh, whenever i do uh educational things to not only help people with the uh the what's but also the how and, uh, and specifically how they think about their progress and how they go about their practicing on a day-to-day -day basis. Can you talk a little bit more about the idea of expressionism? How do some people get better and find their own sort of expression while playing an instrument? Yeah, well, you know, jazz by nature, we're improvising, it's like a language. Um, so the more fluent you become in the language, the more you're able to express yourself. So really what I push a lot on developing players is just to develop their skills as much as possible because by nature of that, they'll be able to ex express themselves more fluidly um, through developing their skills. Um, uh, and it's that simple. But then of course, you know, as you become more advanced, um, especially like the students that I work with at San Francisco Conservatory, we work a lot on more conceptual things and uh, conceptualizing music in different ways. And um, 
you know, that's, that's part of what's so exciting about improvised music is that we can really get into that realm. Yeah, that's amazing. And it's sort of a perfect segue to talk about um, the Brubeck Jazz Summit and Dave Brubeck, who international mm -hmm. statesman, sort of ambassador of goodwill, fighter for social inequalities and uh, justices, and how, you know, that philosophy of a world at large and influence music. Um, mm -hmm. You are uniquely the only faculty member at Bre Brubeck Jazz Summit who went to the Brubeck Institute at the University of Pacific. Talk about that experience. Yeah, it was really special, um, especially because when I when I was there, uh, Dave was still alive. And uh, oftentimes we would, uh, the scholastic group that I was in, the Brubeck Institute Jazz Quintet, or the Brubeck Fellows, uh, we were often referred to uh, as um, you know, it was it was really special. We would get to um, open for Dave uh, quite often, and um, we got to interact with him a lot. And, and um, so, yeah, I was lucky enough to, um, you know, although I didn't specifically study with Dave, of course, I felt like he was a mentor um, and a guide. And, um, and yeah, it was it was very inspirational. Just learning more about his life. Uh, obviously, so many people are um, familiar with his music, but. His and uh, his wife Iola's um, body of work really went uh, beyond just music and beyond jazz. Um, so uh, that's something that I, you know, look forward to uh, getting into uh, at the Rubeck Jazz Summit, and I'm sure we'll get more into not just his music um, and his work in jazz, but what he and Iola did beyond that. Yeah, absolutely. Again, this idea that um, to be sort of great at your craft, you have to be aware of your the world and yeah mm -hmm. Brubeck Jazz Summit is of course um, founded by the Brubeck family and is a living legacy to Dave Brubeck himself mm -hmm. uh, in talking about thinking about the Brubeck Institute can you tell s students a little bit about what they can expect from a conservatory um, experience as opposed to maybe a university music program yeah totally um, I think with the conservatory experience there's just a a lot more specific focus on the music. Um, and, uh, you know, there are pros and cons to both. Uh, and ultimately I always tell people that, you know, um, you kind of pave your own way um, as far as your studies and what you get done. Um, but yeah, the nice thing about a conservatory environment is that uh, you're just going to specifically work, be working on music kind of a higher percentage of the time through your, um, you know, collegiate studies. Um, but uh, yeah, but you know, different people thrive in different environments. So it's all just about finding the right fit for you. That's great. Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit about how students can prepare maybe future Brubeck Jazz Summit students or students in general who have um, like an intensive one week camp in their future. What is that sort of, uh, what's that prep look like? Yeah, I mean, I think what's great is, is that, um, you know, I, I, I always tell students like they don't need to feel anxious about preparing anything for this type of environment because the idea is, you know, we're not expecting anybody to come in as a finished product. I don't even consider myself a finished product yet, you know, so we're all there just to kind of learn from each other and grow together as musicians. Um, so, you know, I, I think the important thing is just to, you know, go, go there with an open mind. Um, you know, these, these, uh, uh, there are going to be a lot of advanced students, of course, this is a select program. Um, but there's still so much to learn, even when you do have a maybe a head start um, as a young musician, and maybe you're a more advanced improviser than a lot of your peers at, at whatever high school you go to or whatever, but there's still so much to learn. That's great. And how, um, how do you approach your instruction style? What can students expect? Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I'm, I'm really... Uh, direct and cut and dry uh, about, you know, developing certain skills. To me, there's so much to this music and learning this language um, that is really just cut and dry as far as, well, you need to do this to get better at this. And you need to do that to get better at that. And um, so, yeah, it, as far as skills go, I really like to just be cut and dry about it. Um, and then as far as the more conceptual things, um, you know, I, I think there is no right or wrong when it gets into the realm of how you want to think about the music aside from the raw skills you need to develop. So with that sort of thing, I just more like to get a conversation going and kind of see where it leads. 
Interesting. So sort of a combination of the fundamentals and uh, wherever that conversation is going. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, I'd love to talk a little bit about your career. You mm -hmm. have um, performed with uh, across genres, notably with mm -hmm. Taylor Swift. Um, can you tell me about how that experience and working in other musical genres is different or similar than working with a band of jazz musicians? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, uh, just first and foremost, the music uh, requires uh, a different approach. But of course, the skills that you develop as a jazz musician apply. And so many of the musicians that you see backing up pop stars like that do have a background in jazz, some more extensive than others. Some might have gone to a conservatory or some might have gone to, uh, to a college where they majored in music. But yeah, so, so many of the musicians that you see backing up those stars uh, have jazz degrees. Um, and the reason for that is as a jazz musician, you develop so many skills that can be really useful in the pop industry but yeah in the pop industry of course it's more about uh playing perfect horn parts and perfect cutoffs and it actually has you know certain elements that sometimes are more uh practice even in the classical world um as far as being very precise and exact with music so yeah it was definitely a fun experience and uh one that i highly valued and i'm really thankful that i was able to do before kind of uh developing my solo career that's fantastic. I how, Tell me a little bit about how you segued into composing music. Well, composing was something that I probably started doing, um, you know, the most. Uh, I really got my start at, you know, the Brubeck Institute when I went there. Um, and that was studied under uh, Dr. Joe Gilman, who was a really valuable experience, who was a former artistic director of the Brubeck Institute. And so he was a really prolific composer. And that was a great opportunity. And, um, you know, Dave Brubeck himself, that's what he was most known for. Um, so yeah, that was a really um, special part of the program when I was there, uh, was really getting to study composition in depth. Wow, yeah, fantastic. It seems like for many musicians, there comes a point where that urge to sort of create your own takes over and mm -hmm. that brought you towards composition uh, becomes really strong. Yeah, absolutely. So Chad, you have mm -hmm. like, you know, to put it simply, an amazing digital presence, um, a beautiful website, strong Instagram, you're on YouTube. Um, what, how, what would you recommend for musicians who are interested in freelance gigging or sort of interested in building this digital brand? Um, and how, how have you approached that? Yeah, well, first and foremost, I always tell musicians, the best thing that I did for my career was get good at music. And um, pretty much everything that I think launched the next step of my career actually didn't really come from a digital presence in the beginning. It really just came from um, the gigs that I was able to acquire, so to speak, you know, through just, um, you know, connecting with other high level musicians and showing what I could do. Um, and so, you know, um, and especially, Focusing on artistry, I think, as soon as I could, once I had developed the skills that I needed to develop to express myself. So I wanted to focus on kind of um, developing a unique voice, and that's something that I'll always be pursuing. Um, but I think that helped with, you know, early on in my career, um, I'm gigging with all sorts of people, everyone from Ron McClure and Clarence Penn to Arturo O'Farrell. And so, you know, that's the really important first step, and that doesn't necessarily take any sort of social media presence. And then from there, um, you know, it's funny because everybody kind of assumes that I'm like a tech whiz or something like that. You know, my social media presence when I first established a following was just as simple as taking videos with my phone. Um, and uh, it never really went beyond that until I hired someone uh, to, to really help curate all my content. So, um, you know, I still barely know how to operate a camera or even a computer, <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. the music is always the most important thing. There's an expression, if you take care of the music, then the music will take care of you. And I really believe that to be a words of wisdom. That's fantastic. And it sounds like, I mean, again, going back to your recommendation for a positive attitude and punctuality is that still um, gigging is happening within a network of referrals. And that when you, you know, it's it's really a, a network. So um, 
perhaps less important about the the digital present yeah yeah absolutely there's still a very i think traditional system in the world of music where the you know the better player you become the more people talk about you and the more you're able to develop your career just from there and that was still i think the very very much the case as i got my career going that's great well thank you so much um yeah absolutely i have a few uh rapid fire questions about mm -hmm. um, how you're living now in this uh strange times and, and yeah. um are you ready yes totally okay uh what are you listening to uh actually uh steve reich music for 18 musicians okay uh reading mm -hmm. Um, uh, let's see, The 48 Laws of Power. Ooh. Uh, yeah. podcasting? Podcast, you said? Yep. I haven't gotten to the podcast thing. Yeah, but I do really like Mark Maron, who, of course, has a WTF podcast. Okay, great, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a show or movie that you would recommend? Um, currently I'm watching Seinfeld, going through, uh, the whole thing. So yeah. that's been fun, yeah. I think this um, interview is maybe focus on the classics and good craftsmanship. Yeah, right. <laughs> sounds like sounds like that was the theme, indeed. Uh, Chad, you have pets, yes? Yeah? No, I don't actually. Pets? Yeah, I used to. I used to have a dog, but yeah, not anymore. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, when's the last time you got a haircut? Uh, I can't even remember. Several <laughs> months ago. <laughs> well, I think if you we've been following along on Instagram, we've seen the progression of like <laughs> mid hair to uh, right. the morning session. It's, it's now. developed a life of its own. <laughs> exactly, it might need its own account. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. I agree. <laughs> uh, what did you have for dinner last night? Uh, um, let's see, a soup made by my girlfriend and I can't remember what was it. It was very healthy. It's always very healthy. Okay, yeah. that's I'll great. Take care of during the quarantine. It's been great. Uh, is there an Instagram account that is currently bringing you joy? Uh, you know, I actually don't spend that much time on social media. Right? Okay. I'm more, I, it's more about the output than the input. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, your proudest career moment? Um, the first time that someone told me I was their favorite saxophone in the world. How cool. Yeah. And did that happen early in your career? That happened quite a while ago. Yeah, it, ha it happened earlier than I expected. Um, but that to me from a very young age was kind of my dream. Like I literally told myself that just to have one person, uh, you know, uh, consider me to be their favorite artist was kind of all I wanted. Yeah, yeah that's incredible. Mm -hmm. that's somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing your proudest personal moment. Huh. I don't think I could do a rapid fire for that. Um, uh, maybe it would be a uh, more, more general thing, but just seeing myself become more and more like my father. Very nice. And mm -hmm. finally, words to live by. Hmm. Think big, live simple. That's fantastic. Well, you know what? That's actually um, all of the questions I have today. It's a pleasure sort of seeing you in, in the virtual flesh. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else? Sort of the folks that have been tuning in or for Brubeck Jazz Summit um, students that we should know about at this time? Yeah, just really excited for the program in July. And uh, yeah, excited to get the opportunity to work with all the wonderful students that are going to be there and, and the faculty as well. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, if anybody does have questions about the camp, um, Brubeck Jazz Summit, our inaugural year, um, please email us uh, and find that information on at Brubeck Jazz Summit. I will be the person behind that email. So looking forward to hearing from you. And great. Scott, again, thanks for your time. <laughs> have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Yes, thank you for having me, Sarah. I really appreciate it. It was fun to talk. It was fun to talk. Take care. Take care. Have a good one. You too.